This has been a video I've wanted to come back to for a while now. The Octava is definitely one of my favorite microphones and I use it a lot. I'm using it right now, of course. And uh, there are some things that I wanted to cover that I couldn't cover in the last video. Meaning the last video was a review test all that stuff involving uh some tech stuff some uh specs on the microphone and really diving deep into what makes this microphone tick but since then i realized that i did make a mistake it's on me that during the tests i left the backtrack on and it didn't give a genuine full representation of what the microphone offers raw and what you can get out of it and for that i do apologize but the one thing i need to address before we get into this microphone and using it in three different scenarios which i'll get into in just a sec is i really appreciate the comments you guys leave and i enjoy the conversations we have and I've had a couple of people ask me, hey, can you throw out a video of the test without the music? Fine, totally fine. 99% of you have been really nice about it. Now I'm not gonna call anybody out. I'm just gonna say in the past, I've had a couple of comments that were a little off-putting, nothing like egregious or like disrespectful. It's just, it was a little bit off-putting. I'm fine. I'm a big boy. I can handle it. But uh, just remember, it. people make mistakes. And don't question my integrity if it's something that is a mistake that could have been just avoided by a simple click, which this was. It was something that I just messed up. It wasn't a decision that I made to say, oh, I'd rather just have music in the background. No, if you've seen my mic reviews in the past, I base my music in the background based on what microphone I have. What I'm getting at is everyone's been constructive. It's just maybe tensions are high on both sides, mine and some people in the comments, but just try to understand that people make mistakes and I fully own up to it. It's totally on me and I do apologize again, but this is what this video is for. And that being said, welcome back to the Rebel Tech channel. I'm Justin, and in this video, we're getting back into the Octava MK012 small diaphragm pencil condenser microphone and showing you how this microphone can be used in three different scenarios. Before we get started, if you have any questions, comments, or anything whatsoever based on this microphone, based on anything that I talked about in this video, like the capsules or anything, uh, leave it down in the comments section down below. I'll be happy to answer any questions you guys have, uh, just about anything. If you want to ask me more directly, I stream on this channel and on Twitch for about an hour on this channel, and then I switch over to Twitch, twitch.tv slash ghetto happy, where I do some dot art on this channel, and then I switch over to my Twitch channel where I play video games. During that whole time, I'll be happy to talk to you guys, have conversations, talk about gear, answer questions, all that stuff. And if you found this video helpful, entertaining, or anything whatsoever, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Okay, so this is going to be an easy video. No tech talk, no specs. Maybe I might refer to some specs, but I'm not going to be running down the list or talking about frequency response curves, which is a big thing for me on this channel if you've been here before. And if you're new, welcome. I appreciate you checking out the video and checking out this pretty sweet microphone right now. So right now we're using the hypercardioid polar pattern on the Octava. And this is my go-to. This is my go-to polar pattern and capsule when I'm recording. It's just easier for the most part behind it because it has that little bit of a pickup pattern on the back. You, chances are you're not gonna have a problem. If you do and you're able to throw something up above it to suppress some of the reflection back, that will help. 
a lot of times you can get something to clip onto a boom pole or you can clip it onto a mic stand uh, and just put like a little shield almost. Uh, you could make it out of cardboard and throw some foam on it. It's very minimal. And that's only if you need to. Chances are you're not going to need to because it's going to sound just fine. Not like a shotgun mic with interior dialogue that I talked about in my shotgun versus small diaphragm or Sennheiser versus Octava video. If you haven't checked that out, I go into different interior settings comparing the two microphones and it shows you how phase delay works on both of those. And I get into phase delay and all that stuff. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the head and we're going to go to the regular cardioid polar pattern. All right, so we're back. We're on the cardioid polar pattern. Now, you may hear a little, the, the polar pattern probably expanded a little bit. You're getting a little bit more of the room, but no reflection off the back if there was any. I don't know for sure. Uh, in the past, I haven't heard anything, mostly because the level isn't like that high because it's literally like, I don't know, it's right here, literally, right out of frame, which... Always try to get your microphone as close to the subject as possible. And communication. Communication is key. When you're on set, make sure you understand your focal lengths and understand that the director or the cinematographer isn't going to be paying attention to you unless you're in the shot. So be careful. Get as close as you can and communicate. Say, hey, am I good? Am I good? Or whatever it is. It, you might sound annoying at times, but at least the job gets done right. So in my conversations I've had with you guys about the polar patterns, we spoke about the polar patterns a lot in the fact that which one is good for this style. And chances are you're going to be doing talking head stuff with this microphone. The other thing you may be doing is using it for instruments or mostly acoustic instruments like acoustic guitars, maybe some woodwinds or something that needs a lot of detail. Acoustic guitar and Vocals are probably the biggest ones. Dialogue meaning the vocals. Okay, so we're on the omnidirectional polar pattern. And obviously you're going to hear a lot more of the room because not only are you hearing in front of me, but omnidirectional means 360 degrees of coverage. So the reflections off the wall are coming back and being heard as prominently as what's in front of it. Obviously the level is going to be lower but it's still there being picked up. I've been wanting to play around with this omnidirectional polar pattern for a couple of things. When it comes to dialogue or vocals, if there's a room that you want to get a little bit of ambient noise or you like the sound of the reverb of the room, throw that thing up in the middle of the room or in a position where you can take advantage of that space, that reverb, that echo or whatever it is, and optimize it as best as possible. I haven't done much research into omnidirectional polar patterns or heads. Uh, from what I've seen, it's used for multiple subjects or uh, maybe an overhead on a drum set or just a ambient noise picker upper. <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna do more research and I will have a video in the future, don't know when, no promises of applications for the omnidirectional polar pattern. A lot of people are probably just gonna stick with the cardioid, stick with the hypercardioid, and probably not even touch the omnidirectional. Chances are, if you could get a bundle with the hypercardioid and the cardioid, maybe get that one. All right, so we're gonna be having the level be a little bit quieter now, so I won't talk as much or don't talk about anything too important. So don't worry if it's a little lower because it is 10 decibels lower. I am going into a 32-bit float file that can raise it up and be more moldable. But I also am using a 24-bit file as well. I do the dual recording at 96 on the sample rate. So for this section, this is talking to future me as well while I'm editing this, throw in the... 24 bit so that it's not altered in any way. 
meaning that I don't accidentally bring it back up to a level that's more suitable. Before we continue, let's throw on a, a hypercardioid polar pattern with the 10 dB pad. Okay, so we have the hypercardioid polar pattern on with the 10 dB pad. Another thing to be careful with these microphones, I said before, be careful with the sensitivity of it. That's why you have the pad. The other thing to be careful about, as I said before, do not cross thread the threads of putting on the heads and the pad or whatever. They're fine threads, so they are easily mess upable. <laughs> you could screw them up, no pun intended. Uh, it's with anything. If you have things that are threaded, be very careful with them. Okay, lastly, cardioid polar pattern. Very standard, very common amongst microphones of all types. And you have to make sure, well, just like when you're using the hypercardioid polar pattern, you got to make sure that the back doesn't have anything loud behind it. For example, if you have like an air conditioning unit, that's literally the vent right above it, you'll have a problem because it's going to pick it up. Less so with this, but that pickup pattern is expanded. It's inflated a little bit, so more area around me is being picked up. A good example for that is I got my little refrigerator here. It went off before, <laughs> so I had to unplug it for a sec while I record this. With the hypercardioid, it's still going to pick that up, but probably not as much as the cardioid. Okay, let's get in the booth and we'll test this thing out some more in a very, not very, but semi very controlled environment. All right, so we're in the booth right now and it's definitely a lot quieter in here than it was in a full room. This is much smaller. The room that I am in, well, technically I'm still in it, but uh, it's about eight, eight by 11 roughly the room size, maybe, yeah, right around there. Uh, and uh, the ceiling is about seven, seven and a half or so. And that's how you're going to hear it before. Now we're in roughly like two and a half by two and a half with still the same ceiling. And we have a typical voiceover setup right now. We're using the cardioid polar pattern right now and chances are you're going to be using this polar pattern maybe the hyper depending on what sound maybe you like better but we'll get into that uh, as I go on with this explanation so you can use this microphone for voiceover work if you like I mean it shows and gives you a lot of detail of spoken word and just about anything you throw into it and if you're not like overwhelming it like I was telling you before try not to overwhelm the microphone you'll be fine and get yourself a nice pop filter I finally uh smartened up and got myself a nice one right here um the metal mesh ones that redirect the air p -p from plosives so if you were to have p -p 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 obviously p -p significantly better all right, so we have the hypercardioid polar pattern on it now, where you're going to notice it's more focused in on my voice and less on the area here, like, like the expansion of my voice. You're also probably not going to hear the pickup in the back because there's a wall just like this, and it's not really bouncing off. It's just suppressing it and being absorbed so maybe this is a option that you're going to use in the booth so these two polar patterns are going to be the prominent ones in a booth setting i will throw on the omnidirectional now and you'll see how it sounds maybe you like it maybe it's just a little more examples of uh, this microphone and what it has to offer Okay, so we have the omnidirectional on here, and I notice a significant difference. Uh, I'm getting a little bit more of a, I don't know how to explain it, more of a, I guess, nasally 
like I am nasally, but I didn't notice it as much with the hypercardioid and the cardioid. Uh, I feel that it's really getting my nose, <laughs> for lack of better terms. At least that's how it sounds in live uh, feed version. It might sound a little different in uh, post-processing, but uh, this is what you're going to hear. And I am not using the 10 dB pad uh, for this booth test because you, you might not need it. Uh, and also, uh, I'm not exceeding or exuding too much noise from myself. So uh, you're not going to necessarily need it. If it's something that you're going to need in the future, uh, obviously put it on if you're being loud. But then again, if you are being loud in a booth with this microphone, I would probably reconsider uh, because a lot of times loud doesn't mean detail. Loud just means loud, and you're probably going to want to use something more like a dynamic microphone or a heavy-duty large diaphragm uh, condenser microphone. Um, I would not recommend doing something too overly loud in a close proximity like this, and that's why I'm not doing it. The last place we're going to do this, we're going to choose a room, and I'm going to try and choose a room that's got a lot of reflective walls. And this test will be not necessarily for quality sense. It's for an example sense. Because a lot of times, for example, if you're doing a interview in a school, in a office building, a lot of times they don't have soft surfaces like a carpet or a... Uh, place where the room is or the walls are treated properly, which they shouldn't be. They, they're not made for that. They're made to be an office. So a lot of reflective surfaces. All right. So our last test is going to be in a non-treated room. This is actually my old room where all my content creation had begun and really learning how to make videos and all that stuff. So we're just going to do some quick tests, nothing crazy. We have the hypercardioid polar pattern on here with a 10 dB pad. And this is going to be a typical setup, maybe not the pad, but a typical polar pattern for this type of area. If you have no choice into what uh, location you're going to be using, uh, this is definitely an option to use because it focuses in on what your subject is saying. And also it has that pickup pattern on the back, but... As I said before, there are ways around it, and just be careful what you place your microphone. Make sure that there's no rumbles, uh, no ACs behind it. If it's just an area of just ceiling, maybe put something soft behind it to dampen it, if it's that bad. If not, don't worry about it. Okay, hypercardioid polar pattern, no pad, and we're into a 32-bit float file, uh, so it's pretty much really dynamic with the range of sounds and uh, bringing it up, bringing it back down, whatever it is. I have mine set, my fader set at three o'clock, 75% up on the Zoom F6. So it's something to consider when you're setting your levels. Uh, of course, always set your levels properly, even if you're using a 32-bit float file, uh, and especially if you're using anything lower, because it really matters when you're using those lower bit rates. Okay, omnidirectional polar pattern on this microphone in this room. Something that you probably won't go to if you're using it, uh, maybe. If you like the sound of it, cool. If not, then I can't imagine it being too good in the room like this because you're really picking up the room. Of course, if you're looking for a sound of a room or some ambient noise or something, uh, if you like the, uh, the way the room sounds or in anything, yeah, sure, use that, but if you're focusing in on dialogue, probably not the choice you're going to make when it comes to this head. All right, omnidirectional with the 10 dB pad. We're at still at 3 o'clock, 75% up on the fader and a into a 32-bit float file. Uh, still the reflective room, still not treated, just the area rug underneath me. Of course, 10 decibels lower. Uh, Again, I, I don't think you're going to be using this in this scenario unless it's something specific you're looking for. The hypercardioid is definitely made for this. And next up, we're going to be using the cardioid polar pattern. Maybe a better sound uh, depending on 
what's behind the microphone when you're using it. All right, so last but certainly not least, the cardioid polar pattern on the Octava MK012. Uh, this microphone is really good for this area, and this capsule is certainly made for this. Um, you're not going to get the reflection off the back, or at least not the pickup. And I feel like this has potential to be a better shot to using than the Hyper, depending on the room you're in. I think the biggest change, the biggest difference would be if the ceiling is higher. So for example, if you got a big ceiling and a lot of echo can come back, I think it's going to be better to use the cardioid as opposed to the hyper because of that pickup pattern in the back. But if you have a room that's probably a little lower like this, probably like eight foot ceilings, maybe consider using the hyper cardioid because you could get more pinpoint accuracy. But this all doesn't matter if you have an air conditioning unit, in which case you probably should use that cardioid because it will uh, focus in on the front and reject the back, uh, which I know ACs can be a pain in the butt. It's not fun using a microphone in any setting when you're dealing with rumbles of that style. Okay, so this is going to be our last test. 10 dB pad on the cardioid polar pattern of the Octava. Uh, really, I can't really say much more. This uh, microphone is really good at... Um, interior dialogue as it what it's made for um, if you haven't seen it I did a video on guitars uh, acoustic guitars with this microphone with the multiple heads and uh, different types of guitars different sounds you're going to hear uh, all acoustic because you don't want to be throwing this on a guitar amp uh, it's not necessarily made for that you want more of a dynamic microphone and if you want a suggestion I guess the SM57 probably would be the one to go for. I've used that a couple of times, and I've used stereo ones as well on cabinets, and it's something that uh, I've been wanting to get into, and uh, I'm not going to buy one until I actually get back into playing guitar and uh, start using amplifiers. And Because, uh, to be honest, just like this microphone can be used for acoustic guitars, that Shure SM57 is made for a cabinet and can handle a lot of sound. And, uh, of course, I have the Rode Pod mic, I have the uh, Personas PD70, but I feel like those microphones won't lend well to a guitar. I've heard a couple of examples, and I'm not too sold on it. Those are made for a spoken word. All right, so we're back in the studio, back in our normal setting. Throughout this video, we went through multiple scenarios where you can use the Octava MK012, and I hope that it helps understand the pickup patterns, the way it reacts to certain scenarios in a booth, in a mildly treated area, and a non-treated area. And of course, no music in the background for those tests. Of course, now it's back on because we are doing an outro. And I really enjoyed this one because it's been a little bit more informative and a little bit more practice with using this microphone. So I hope that it was uh, just as informative to you guys. That all being said, thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you liked that video, please hit the like button down below and consider subscribing for more videos that are coming out in the future based on the Octava, voiceover work, gears anything if you have any suggestions leave it down in the comment section also if you have any questions anything whatsoever please down in the comments if you want to talk to me or ask me something directly i stream every saturday gonna be wednesday starting in february i'm making the decision now every wednesday and saturday starting in february but until then it's just gonna be saturday uh you can ask me questions there too I start off an hour on here, do some dot to dot art, at least until the books are done, <laughs> uh, because I don't know what I'm going to do after that, but I'm sure I'll figure out something. And then I switch over to my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash ghetto happy, where I play video games. Uh, I just finished Assassin's Creed Unity. I'm going on to Assassin's Creed Syndicate this Saturday. Actually, this when this video comes out, that this day. So if you're watching this on day, the 16th, this video is out and I'm streaming that day. So if you check out that video that day, probably around like five o'clock, I should start. Just, to, it will be a notification on YouTube. And that's it. As always, be safe, be kind. If you go out, please wear a mask, at least until the world gets back to normal and then you could ease up on the mask wearing. It really sucks, to be honest. I hate wearing a mask, but it's something we gotta do right now. But 
until the world gets back to normal, please continue wearing a mask. It's something that helps. It might not seem like it helps, but it helps. And of course, I will see you in the next video. Oh, the guy's getting a shave. Oh, well, man, that would have been bad if I bumped him at the wrong moment. We're going to have a Sweeney Todd in, uh, situation. Hello, everyone.